here's some good Friday news. Yesterday, officials announced that the Biden administration has decided to close immigration and customs enforcement detention centers in Georgia and Massachusetts because of the allegations of abusive treatment of immigrants. So the two mm. worst centers, they're gone. Homeland Security Chief Alejandro Mayorkas directed ICE to terminate its contract with the Bristol County Sheriff's Office and transfer migrant detainees out of the Carlos Carrera Immigration Detention Detention Center in North Dartmouth, Massachusetts. The order comes four months after the Massachusetts Attorney General found that the Sheriff's Office used excessive force against detainees, such as flash bang grenades, pepper ball launchers, and canines in a oh clash over coronavirus testing. Wow. Wow. That's horrible. That is horrible. Mayorkas also directed ICE to prepare to discontinue its use of the Irwin County Detention Center in Osceola, Georgia, as soon as possible. NBC News reported last September that a gynecologist who worked at the facility was accused by multiple of women of performing unnecessary procedures on them. You remember that story? That was at those? Uh... Yeah. Oh, yeah. wow. Right. But that was under the Trump administration. And, you know, Lurch, and that was in Georgia. And Lurch, you know, Stephen mm -hmm. Miller, who was running Trump's immigration team, he wasn't going to do anything. So it was right. reported back in November of 2020 that the Trump administration was deporting or trying to deport several women who alleged that they were mistreated by a Georgia gynecologist in an immigration detention center. This is the one in Osceola, Georgia, Nasty. the Irwin County Detention Center. Now, six former patients complained about this guy. We just saw his picture, Dr. Mahendra Amin, who had been accused of operating on migrant women without their consent or performing procedures that were medically unnecessary and potentially endangered their ability to have children. At least seven others at the Irwin County Detention Center in Osceola, Georgia, who had made allegations against the doctor, have received word that they would also be deported from the United States. So when it was Trump, you complain about medical malpractice and mistreatment, unnecessary surgeries, and they deport you. Now, mm. in a memo to ICE Acting Director Tay Johnson, Mayorkas, now remember, Mayorkas is the head of the Department of Homeland Security, said, allow me to state one foundational principle. We will not tolerate the mistreatment of individuals in civil immigration detention or substandard conditions or detention. A source familiar with federal investigations into the detention center in Irwin County, Georgia, and the doctor who allegedly performed these unnecessary procedures said both investigations were being reactivated and ongoing. The ACLU, which had been pushing for the closure of the two facilities, as well as three dozen others, praised the move. Carol Rose, the executive director of the ACLU of Massachusetts, said, by shuttering detention facilities with a track record of problematic conditions, ending local collaboration with ICE, we can work together toward a fairer and more humane immigration system. Bristol County Sheriff Thomas Hodgson issued a sharply worded statement Thursday afternoon saying, shame on the Department of Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas for putting his left-wing political agenda above public safety by ending the Bristol County Sheriff's Office contracts with Immigration and Customs Enforcement. And I say shame on Bristol County Sheriff Thomas Hodgson, who is supporting right. the use of flash bang grenades, right. pepper ball launchers, and canines against immigrants who are just trying to flee their persecution, mostly from other countries, or immigrants who have already served their jail time for a criminal act that are now being held in another detention, civilly, not even criminally. Right. And even if it was criminal, nobody deserves to have canines thrown on them, let At alone all. flash grenades and pepper sprays and everything else over a coronavirus test. Shame on Sheriff Thomas Hodgson. That part. He goes down in Bradshaw lore, right with the pumpkin, Lurch, and the weasel from yesterday. Yes. All in the same bucket. <laughs> All in the same Arty. bucket. So that's good Friday news. At least two really bad detention centers are being shut down. And it's way past due. Here's some more good Friday news. I mean, it was heavy news, but good news. Because it was really bad yes. what they were doing. But it's good at least they're stopping it now. Agreed. Here's some good Friday immigration news. 
Couples in same-sex marriages can now pass citizenship on to their children born overseas. So you see mm. where that would be a problem? Because mm -hmm. you could only pass citizenship on as a biological parent. So mm -hmm. let's say hypothetically you're in a same-sex marriage, two females are in a same-sex marriage, and the female gives birth abroad. And mm. it's the female who gives birth abroad, a child who is the non-American citizen. Under the law, that child's not a U.S. citizen. But that child is being born to a marriage between two women. So as long as the U.S. citizen woman is married to another woman who is giving birth outside of the United States mm. of America, gotcha. that child, even though that child is, is not biological, biological to the U.S. citizen mother in the same-sex marriage, will now be able to obtain U.S. citizenship. And now here's some more, at least encouraging news on Friday. I mean, the death toll of 584,975 deaths is not good, but it has still not gone up more than a thousand in the last three days, less than a thousand people. That's pretty good here for the United That's States good. of America compared to where we were. Now, roughly 50%, almost 50% of Americans of all ages now have received at least one dose of the vaccine. 38% are fully vaccinated. The country is closing in on half of those age 18 and up being fully vaccinated. The average daily pace of U.S. coronavirus vaccinations is down 50% from its peak, but people are still getting vaccinated. Now, there is some concern for some states. If you are in Mississippi, Alabama, Louisiana, Arkansas, Wyoming, Idaho, Georgia, and Tennessee, you guys have the lowest vaccine rates in the United States. So there Yikes. is concern for people in those states because they are not going to be protected. The concern is that clusters and of outbreaks can pepper unprotected areas all summer long. Some states are doing lotteries to get people to do the vaccine. We talked about New York lottery yesterday. We talked about the Ohio lottery. Maryland also is giving away millions of dollars in a vaccine lottery available to those who get the jab. The jab. You like, you like saying that? The jab? The jab? It's like down there with hip hip hooray for me. <laughs> I don't like saying the jab. I don't like the jab. Yeah, I don't like it either. Governor Larry Hogan announced that starting on Tuesday, the Maryland Lottery will randomly select one vaccinated Marylander for a $40,000 prize every single day for the next 40 days through July 3rd. So every day, if you're vaccinated in Maryland, you have the chance to win 40,000 smackaroos. That's wild. And on July 4th, our country's birthday, the birthday <laughs> of the United States of America, one lucky vaccinated individual residing in the state of Maryland on July 4th will win $400,000. Do you know who- 400000 Yeah, do you know who earns $400,000, by the way, besides the July 4th winner of the Maryland vaccination lottery? Who? President of the United States makes $400,000 a year. That's his salary. That's it? Yep, that's it. Hmm. So anybody in Maryland who's been vaccinated can be in it. We have questions. So, you have questions? Right. What questions do you have? <laughs> yo, yo, we'll talk to something. I'm wondering, I have somebody actually who's watching right now who's in Maryland who just got vaccinated, actually just got their vaccination yesterday. I wonder if they are able to put their name in. Yeah. The answer is yes, they can put their name into the jab lottery. The jab lottery, the jab lottery in Maryland. Because, Hear that. because according to Bradshaw Live Notes, fact, a fact, Vanessa. Fact. Fact. Just a full of facts. This is full of facts. <laughs> Here's a fact in Maryland. Anyone who lives in Maryland who is vaccinated in Maryland is in the lottery. Fact. Doesn't matter uh -oh. when it happened. Listen. You heard it here first. So it's a total of $2 million in Maryland. So if you're listening in Maryland right now. Maryland. Maryland, go get the jab. It. Go get the jab. Remind <laughs> me that after today, we'll never say jab again on our show. Please. I've never even heard it's that. Awful. I don't you like never it. heard that? It's awful, right? Yeah, yeah it's jab? awful. It's a British thing. Yeah. On Monday, we'll talk about apartments for let. That's what they say in Britain, too.
You have an apartment oh, okay. for let instead of rent, right? Isn't that what they say? For let? For let, right? Isn't that? Or maybe I'm instead wrong. Instead of I, rent? I, I, I don't know. So. I've never heard that. I think go Google that. Go Google. I could be wrong, but I believe. Apartment for let. Apartment for let is what they say in London. Is that yep. what they say? Yes, apartment right? For let in right. London. Apartment for let. Like, let me in. Let me rent the apartment. Apartment yeah. for let. You have some apartment for let? Yes, you can. You, or a, yes, or a let, flat. Yes, a flat. We'll let you in. We'll let you a flat. <laughs> we'll let you a flat. Yes. <laughs> it's Friday, man. Did you hear about that little island they just opened up in New York? Man-made so, island? So, funny thing is, I was on a cruise brunch on Sunday, and I saw it, and I was like, Where'd that why have from? I never seen this? Because yeah. it looks so, it looks, it's, that's what it looks like from, you know, I was on the water. I was like, I've never even seen this. I didn't know that it was new until today. The man-made island they built on the Hudson River. You can get to it by walking to the end of 14th Street, West 14th Street, step off of Manhattan and onto a floating box. It's two and a half acres of winding paths and green lawns, wildflowers and shrubs, and hundreds of types of grasses, perennials and vines, and more than 60,000 flowers. There are river overlooks, there's a performance space, but to prevent overcrowding, at least in the beginning, between noon and 8 p.m. for a free reservation, you have to go to littleisland.org because they think it's going to be too many people trying to see what this place is like right in the beginning. Yeah. It was a $120 million park, and it was built by private donations. There will be absolutely no corporate or private parties, no rentals, no weddings, no bat mitzvahs allowed, yo-yo. Listen, there's going to be a it lot was actually, of it was bar actually, bat mitzvah kids that are going to be pissed off. They that can't, they can't, they can't do that. that little island bat mitzvah. My clients are going to find a way. I'm sure My they will. My clients will make sure by, they can find a way. By the way, That's almost all of the money, because it was done privately, was donated by Barry Diller. He is a billionaire, and he donated almost $120 million to fully fund the construction of the park and maintenance of the park for the next 20 years. So perhaps Barry Diller's grandkids would get bar mitzvah there, but nobody else. Right. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. That's it. Dion Broxton, a TV reporter who went viral last year for his candid response to an approaching herd of bison, is now an Iowa Broadcast News Association Award recipient. I don't know about this story. Let's see what it is. On the anniversary of the sensational video, which shows Broxton gathering his equipment and packing it into his car upon spotting the bison, he shared the exciting news on Twitter. He wrote in a tweet a year later, I get tired of talking about this video, but it's a reminder of my journey. I couldn't get a job on TV because of my hood Baltimore accent. I spent thousands on a speech coach. Fast forward Aww. this week, I learned I won an award for the Iowa Aww. Broadcast News Association. In March 2020, Broxton cut his report short at Yellowstone National Park when he realized a herd of bison was heading his way. Let's watch. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, I ain't messing with you. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, I'm not messing with you. Okay. It is not mm. worth it. <laughs> it is it not worth it. He goes, I ain't messing with you. I'm getting out of here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah that's the thing that people don't see as like you know host sometimes it's like you kind of have to just keep your cool like you got a job to do no matter your circumstances that's hilarious <laughs> yeah, no. and by the way that video which was his natural personality <laughs> reaction right reaction is natural personality that put him right to start him he's doing well the nbc montana reporter said he saw the danger approaching we heard what he had to say after posting the video he tweeted there was a herd of bison walking right toward me at yellowstone national park here's the video of the bison i shot once i got safe distance so congratulations to him 19 year old madison Cohote recently moved out of state from oklahoma into a new apartment in arkansas without realizing it was a retirement complex. Now the teenager is documenting her life, living amongst all the elderly in what, what? one TikTok commentator appraised could be a sitcom. 
me getting ready yeah. to move to an apartment out of state that I've never seen a person and realize I just moved into a retirement home. Maddie oh captured God. her new viral introductory clip and life there, it seems, is good. The rent was significantly cheaper from where <laughs> she had moved you. from. And I was able to lease a two bedroom for only $350 a month. It was super spacious, <laughs> felt like home. Now the teen oh already God. had something of an unusual life back in Oklahoma where she had two absent parents. But after meeting a woman named Gigi on TikTok, the two developed a close bond and she became her TikTok mom. A year later, Gigi offered to adopt the teen. Maddie accepted. Gigi oh. convinced her to pack up her life in Oklahoma, moved to Arkansas to be near her new family and helped her find a cheap apartment. It wasn't until <laughs> a week later she realized how far out of the demographic she really was. When I got out of my car, I started meeting my neighbors. To my surprise, they were all over 65 and 70 years old. A week oh later... I only realized after reading a senior citizen's apartment sign that I realized I actually moved into a retirement village. But Madison is not complaining as anyone can see from her joyous TikToks. She has fully embraced the life. When I get home, it's usually super, super quiet because all my neighbors are already asleep by 5 p.m. But one Aww. major perk is that I can play music whenever I want because they can't hear it anyway. Some commentators oh insist there must be downsides too. Congratulations, you're their IT person now, one said. But Maddie <laughs> is not looking back. And just remember, she signs off in one of her TikToks. If you're struggling with wet rent, start retirement early. That's very funny. Uh, I love it. <laughs> that, is, that is very funny. Florida couple hope to have their dream wedding on the grounds of a magnificent multi-million dollar mansion that boasts a tennis court, a gazebo, and a pool with a waterfall. The only problem was they never told the homeowner about their plans. Courtney Wilson and Shanita Jones had invited their whole family to their dream home and estate, which turned out to be the state they don't own and reportedly didn't rent in the upscale Florida suburb of Southwest Ranches, the South Florida Sun Centennial reported. The 16,000 square foot mansion, which is on the market for $5 million, is not a wedding venue, but it does have a bowling alley. It does have 15 bathrooms, a home theater, and an 800 foot square bar. In their online wedding invitation, Wilson and Jones referred to themselves as the royal couple, promised a reception that featured a red carpet cocktail hour on Saturday, followed by brunch on Sunday. But when Wilson showed up Saturday morning to set up, he shocked the homeowner who claims he never gave them permission to hold their wedding on his property. Nathan Finkel told a 911 dispatcher, I have people trespassing on my property. They keep harassing me, calling me. They say they're having a wedding here and it's God's message. I don't know what's going on. All I want is for it to stop. And they're sitting at my property right at the front gate right now. This is the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard in my life. Yeah, when I officers think, arrived- I think, it, I think it's stifling. When officers arrived, they instructed Wilson to leave and he left. Finkel, whose late father was the early IHOP restaurant franchisee, has been trying to sell the palatial estate for $5 million. Very strange. Story. I think it's trifling. It I feel trifling. like that's trash. I don't think that's funny. I think that's trifling. You pretend to want to buy the house, so you go in as a potential fake potential buyer. No, no. They, they thought the house was empty. They looked at the house. They said, oh, nobody's living there. We're going to have our wedding. Nobody will know the difference. We're going to set up on the lawn and nobody else know the difference. But there was I, apparently I, I, somebody I read, living there. That's what happened. I, I read somewhere the fiance was pretending that he wanted to buy the house so he can go in and look at it. And then he, that's when he was like, okay, yeah. Oh, so oh, since oh, no, see, I, I read it as that they thought the house was empty. And they were just no, inviting people to an empty house that was on the market. Well, yeah, that's what they thought. He that's didn't know that. That's what it that was. Jill, my... is saying, Jill is saying in my ear that's what it was. And then they were surprised when all the wedding guests came and actually somebody was living there. That's illegal. That's trespassing. Of course it Even is. if it's empty or not. Of I think course that's it is. Vanessa, what's going on down there in Florida? <laughs> yeah, what's going on down there, Nesquik? I don't know, man. I'm new in town. All right, our last Friday story. When it comes to virtual learning, it helps to make the best of it. Six-year-old Delaney Jones of Beaverton, Oregon, was filming herself during a craft tutorial. Her dad, Isaac Jones, not realizing that Delaney was filming herself for school and not just fun, hilariously dances to uptown funk in the background. Delaney's mom, <laughs> Jennifer Jones, told Good Morning America, as I was looking through Delaney's seesaw, 
I was surprised when I came across a video that showed my husband dancing in the background of this craft tutorial she sent. As I continued to watch, I was laughing so hard, Yo. tears were streaming. She said, I knew my husband had no idea she had sent it to her teacher. When I called him at work to tell him that I found a video of him dancing in the background while she did a craft project and it had been sent to her teacher, he asked me if I was sure three different times. The kicker, she said, was when she told Isaac about the Facebook upload. He laughed out of nervousness and disbelief that he got caught being so silly with the kids, but millions of viewers, along with Delaney's teacher, have enjoyed the video. The scene, though, never meant for the public. It's just a typical one in the Jonas house. <laughs>